Dear learners, greetings. In this part of the diuretic chapter lecture, what we are going to do is the chemistry, basic chemistry and synthesis of acetazolamide. Now, the mechanism everyone knows now that this is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. What it does, it inhibits the carbonic anhydrase. As the carbonic anhydrase is inhibited, the protons uh, will not be released into the lumen so that the ultimately the concentration of sodium in the lumen increases and the sodium and bicarbonate form sodium bicarbonate and this sodium bicarbonate has to pass out and for passing of the sodium bicarbonate the water will not be reabsorbed this water will remove along with the sodium bicarbonate because of the maintain the acid base balance to maintain the uh, osmotic uh, balance because the sodium bicarbonate is causing the hypertonic solution. So that part we had discussed in the first part of uh, the chapter. Now in this uh, part we are going to discuss the synthesis of uh, the compound that is the acetazolamide. Now whenever we discuss the uh, synthesis of the acetazolamide, now we, we have to see the basic parts in the acetazolamide what they are at actually now check the first part is acid aceta then the second is azole and the third part is amide now this first part that is the aceta is this one check this this part is your aceta can you see this this is the i'll, I'll write here only this is the ch3 then C double bond O. If I put one OH here, so that will be acetic acid. So this instead of OH, there it is NH. Okay, so there is the CH3CO. So what is the CH3CO is that is the aceta. This is the aceta. The next one is the azole. Now, in case of azole, actually this one is the five-membered ring. See this ring. What I'm talking about is this ring. This is the five membered ring. In this five membered ring, one, this is one, two, three, and four. So five. Now one is the sulfur, thia. And the, the uh, there are the two nitrogens are there. So this is the thia diazole ring. The one which I have uh, made a square. So this ring is what? It's a thia diazole ring. So, this azole is this particular part. You got that? So, what I just wanted you to understand very clearly is once you know the name of the drug, from the name of the drug, we should be in a position to draw the structure. And once we draw the structure, from that structure, we can write the IUPAC name, that is fine. And from that structure, if you see that structure in parts, parts, from that parts, we have to identify that how we are going to synthesize that drug. Got that? So, aceta is one part that is clear. Azo, that is clear. That is the uh, thiodiazole. And amide is this sulfonamide. SO2NH2. This SO2NH2 part is what? This is the sulfonamide part. So, this is acetazolamide. Understand? Acetazolamide. Now, Whenever we discuss about the acetazolamide, the basic ring what we are going to synthesize in the beginning, that is this particular part. See this. The thing which I have drawn, now what we are doing is, we are doing the synthone approach. Synthone approach is what? The, uh, we are looking at the, now first part what we did, we know the drug name. From that drug name, from that aceta, azo and amide, we know now aceta group is there, diazole ring is there and the sulfonamide is there. So that we have drawn the structure right and written the IUPAC. Now thereafter what, what is the next part? Synthone approach that is you see the structure in parts parts. Now the structure which I have just written in the square. So that particular part we are going to synthesize first. Now if you see this is the nitrogen, second nitrogen and two bond. So, this is nothing but the NH2, NH2 and water molecule. So, what is this? This is the, this is what? 
hydrazine hydrate so that this part of the structure we can get it from this hydrazine NH2 NH2 hydrazine and if you can observe this particular part if you can observe this particular I'll repeat see this sulfur and this one so that is sulfur is there carbon is there triple bonds are there and the nitrogen is there so what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll write the structure that is ammonium thiocyanate check this this sulfur is present here this carbon is present here and this nitrogen is over here understand so that if I want to again from here also it is clear this is a sulfur is there understand this carbon is there isn't it sulfur is there carbon is there so what I just wanted to know uh, you to understand the two molecules are required two molecules of ammonium thiocyanate is required and one molecule of what we have seen in the last part that is the this molecule is required see the hydrazine hydrate is required to synthesize this part and this ammonium thiocyanate is required to synthesize this part of the molecule so that from the structure you know that what would be the starting compounds are so you see here as we have seen that what we required is the first part is the hydrazine hydrate is required and thereafter we require the ammonium thiocyanate now if i write see this is one nitrogen connected to one nitrogen i'll write both the hydrogen in this way see this is one hyd one hydrogen and this is the another hydrogen so this is what hydrazine hydrate i have written here okay thereafter what i'll do ammonium thiocyanate i'll write okay check this now this ammonium thiocyanate is one 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 thing is what this way that is NH4SCN another tautomeric form what you can write is NH2C NH2 and double bond S if I am writing this also so that is again this is the same thing that is ammonium thiocyanate now what I will do is this is going to react with two molecules of ammonium thiocyanate now this is going to react with say NH2 okay this NH2 carbon double bond sulfur isn't it carbon double bond sulfur and this carbon is uh, this carbon is attached to another NH2 group so this is carbon and NH2 is there clear okay now what will happen this NH2 and this proton they will be removed in the form of minus ammonia so that is NH3 so once this is removed you see this this nitrogen is this nitrogen then nitrogen is connected to carbon this is this carbon then this carbon is attached to NH2 see here this is the NH2 and this is sulfur you see here it is the sulfur now this particular part we are going to synthesize now what what would be again the same thing so what, what will be there so here it is NH2 okay then it is carbon double bond sulfur and one NH2 so what I have written the same thing of ammonium thiocyanate ammonium thiocyanate I have written once again in this form now what will happen this NH2 and this proton they will be removed as minus NH3 means what two molecule of ammonia will be lost now this nitrogen is this nitrogen okay then this nitrogen will connect to what the carbon with sulfur see this carbon with sulfur and one NH2 will be there the NH2 is here you got that so what I have done is hydrazine hydrate I have just opened both the protons and to that I have added the two molecules of ammonium thiocyanate ammonium thiocyanate NH4SCN instead of writing NH4SCN how I have written NH2 C NH2 double bond S okay you can stop the video replay it and check 
how I have done this. So that ultimately what I am going to get is hydrazine hydrate reacts with the ammonium thiocyanate. There will be loss of ammonia, the two molecules of ammonia and you will get this 1, 1 2 bis thiocarbamoyl hydrazine. Now, next step what is going to happen is this double bond will be shifting here, this double bond will be shifting here. What will happen? This proton will be shifting here forming SH. This proton will be shifting here forming SH. And then it is going to react with phosphogen that is the cyclization is going to take place. Means what happens? This NH2 and this proton, these will be removed as NH3 that is ammonia will be removed and once this ammonia is removed the cyclization takes place to get 5 amino C this is 1 2 3 4 and 5 so it is 5 amino second position mercapto 5 amino 2 mercapto 1 3 4 thiadiazole now once we get this molecule now you know that at this position it is Acetazolamide. Acetazolamide means where two parts are remaining. One is the aceto group and the sulfonamide part. Now, what will happen? This NH2 we have to convert it into the NHCOCH3. So, so what is the next reaction? That will be the CH3COCl. Acyl chloride. Acylation will take place. So, how this acylation will take place? One proton and one chlorine will be removed in the form of minus HCl and you will get CH3CONH. Understand? Like, like this you will get the molecule. Now we got the aceta part now. Now again the amide part acetazolamide that uh, mercapto group this mercapto group we have to convert into into the SO2NH2 this is the final structure SO2NH2. Now this part is done with this part is done with now we have to think about this part SO2NH2. Now how, how this is going to happen? That is the oxidation reaction in presence of aqueous chlorine. Aqueous chlorine. So what will happen? This is SH. Understand? This is chlorine. So there is chlorine. Chlorine. So HCl. This HCl will be removed and HCl will be removed. Oxidation is taking place. Sulfur is going to SO2 and this one chlorine. So SO2Cl will come at this place and then amylation will take place in presence of ammonia. We are having so much ammonia in every step we have seen that the ammonia molecule is released. This ammonia will react and then what will happen again NH3 how I will write NH2 and one proton. This proton and chlorine this will be removed in the form of HCl and SO2NH2 SO2NH2 you will get the acetazolamide. You understand this thing? So, acetazolamide is synthesized by taking the hydrazine hydrate and two molecules of ammonium thiocyanate. The, the, once these two are reacted, so there will be the formation of 1 to base thiocarbamoyl hydrate. Here, the two ammonia molecule will be released. Then the cyclization will be taking place after the double bond shift and then in presence of phosphogen you will get the thiadiazole ring 134 thiadiazole ring with the substitution at the fifth position amino and the second position mercapto then it will be uh, acylation reaction will be taking place in presence of uh, CH3COCl style chloride you will get the uh, acylation acylated compound then it will be oxidized in presence of liquid chlorine, aqueous chlorine. So, what will happen? There is the SO2Cl formation in presence in the, uh, the mercapto group is converted to SO2Cl. And then amidation takes place using the ammonia and it will form the sulfonamide group that is SO2NH2. And you will get the acetazolamide. Okay, so this is the... Uh, acetazolamide compound uh, as uh, you know this is acting as a diuretic even in case of treatment of edema in the um, congestive I mean uh, CHF okay so there also you can use uh, congestive heart failure uh, related edema 
this can be used even in case of a glaucoma to decrease the intraocular pressure these acetazolamides are used but these are weak diuretics the effect lasts for just two to three days understand so this is all about the synthesis of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor acetazolamide thank you